Okay, what do you have? You have the beginning of the film here. Um, what's the best way to draw it? The best way to draw it is as a hairpin, like that. That's basically the end of the movie. This stuff is the black and white stuff. This is color. And this is running backwards as a series of jumps. And what we do is we cut between the two the whole way through. So we alternate scene here, scene there, scene there, scene there, scene there, scene there, and they meet towards the end of the film. But then within this, you have flashbacks to a different timeline, which is actually even earlier, somewhere around there. Also within this, you have flashbacks to an earlier time, also somewhere within there. So I guess you could use the hairpin shape to represent the bulk of the film with the black and white, with the color, meeting in the last reel, the end of the film being sort of there-ish, after it turns into color and kind of leads us into the beginning of that preceding scene. But you have other material that actually precedes the beginning of the black and white scenes. And the gap between the beginning of the black and white scenes and this long-term memory stuff, some of which is color, some of which is black and white, um, that gap is unspecified. The lead character, because of his particular condition, he can never know how long that's been. He's cut loose in time, effectively. So we never wanted to specify for the audience. We imply a length of time to it, because it's the time in which he's had these tattoos put on, it's, he's been living this life, um, and so forth. So that gap, to me, is where the most interesting ambiguity of the film is, at the end. You know, we never wanted to step fully outside his head and you know, specify too many of these things in terms of an objective reality. Because to me, one of the interesting things about the film and what we were trying to do is essentially present a, uh, 